Okay, cool. Um, first of all, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever, wherever you guys are right now. But I mean, because I'm currently just woke up, and maybe you can not hear my voice really nice here. So, uh, welcome to Level Up, but Crowd's first virtual hacking conference. It's a nice conference, I thought. So this is my topic is uh, about finding hidden gems in all programs. Uh, I'm not sure at first why I put this kind of topics. It's just that uh, whenever when I found that about crowd creating a conference, uh, I found that hey, why this is my chance to presenting or sharing something to other researchers that especially for those new researchers, how to find but or how to find finding some findings at least p3 or p4 in some old program because lately i heard most of people uh, keep asking me how are you able to find bugs even in one program every day every day they ask me i always say that yeah i still can find some bugs in old programs so they keep asking me so i say that okay why not I keep I will sharing this all how my tricks to find some hidden gems in old programs. So this is a little bit about me. I'm originally from Malaysia. I'm currently working with uh, Aura Information Security as a security consultant in New Zealand. So hi from New Zealand. It's 7:30 a.m. here. Cold. It's really cold here. <coughs> it's still winter. I've been seven years in industry, I mean, uh, in the security industry. I was a chemical engineering graduate, but then I hate chemical. <laughs> then I have opportunity to join one of my senior in security. So since 2020, no, 2020, sorry about that. In 2010, I joined uh, one of the, I joined uh, the, one of the local security company, and from there I found that hey, security is something interesting. And then in 2013, uh, that's where Bug Crops uh, make their debut, and I found that hey, this is something that's cool where I can use my skill or use my knowledge to do some testing for others' website while getting a reward. This is something good for me to get uh, some. Uh, some rewards by using my free time so why not and up until today uh, i'm still active in backcraft but not really active like before currently i'm at third in backcraft leaderboard this year already uh passed me a second place and it's it's just a dream to bypass uh, mongo at this moment uh, i'm not sure is uh, mongo actually a real person or just an alien he's he's really he's really extreme <laughs> okay, that's all a little bit about me. So why this topic? So why this topic? This why I I choose this topic is this because my my friends and all talk all or some of the persons that uh, that meet me and know that I'm active in Bakrai, whenever they know who I am, I'm used the nickname, the or something like that. They keep asking me, how do you do bug bounty? How are you able to find bugs? Why they doing the same thing, but they cannot able to find any bugs at all. They always got du duplicates. That's definitely, I believe most of all, always have that kind of experience. Also, the application is too hard to find any bug. That's why they think about and what they told me whenever uh, they join the, the Bakra or Hikawa or Sane or any bug bounty platform. Whenever they face this kind, they experience this kind of situation, they're usually demotivated and they don't want to do more, do bug bounty anymore. Especially some of them, even though they found bugs, they just got thanks instead of rewards. And that. So I choose this topic. And I'm going to share some of the tips or tricks 
So how this topic will help you guys? First, about this topic is more on my personal observation in bug crowd itself. Uh, so uh, most of the tips and tricks is only can be applied on bug crowd. Probably it can be applied on another platform, but bug crowd is best. Bug crowd is still still uh, still uh, good in terms of uh, finding uh, bugs in all ongoing programs, something like that. So um, also uh, have intention to help the others to be able to find findings bugs in the old, especially on the old invited programs or public programs. Why? By having uh, by helping others uh, to find bugs or uh, in all invited programs, they can get some kudos point from that way, which this from kudos point, the platform will see that you guys as an active researchers from and got some active activities. From there, you can get more invited private program where that's most of uh, most of the researchers intention where to get a fresh private program. <clears throat> I also I hope uh, my talk will motivate others to not stop diving in old invited programs. Keep on diving. There are still lots of bugs in old programs. And I also uh, probably one of the uh, tip and trick is uh, to understanding the objective of the program itself because I noticed lots of uh, as a security concern as a pen tester, uh, one of the main criteria main of concern from my client is actually for us to understand what the objective, what the objective of the application and how this uh, application uh, is secure, how we're going to test the application and so on. And also we're going to maximizing the usage of backcross VRT. It's good to have backcross uh, uh, VRT because uh, the, rating, the rating that they provide actually help us as well to understand what kind of issue actually backcross really want to see and what the client want uh, to have to look at. <coughs> and also do not expect any lead method here. I'm not going to share any lead method here because I'm not lead at all. And also I don't have any tools. Uh, most of my uh, activity, I just use a burp suit, uh, manual, manual checking, so on. Just what, similar like whatever you guys can see from other, other talks. Uh, maybe from Ben Star, he going to uh, another Ben said in the Hamset thoughts he going to share with you guys how to do a, a recon like a boss. I mean that that's something good. You can uh, take a look at how you they doing their recon, how what kind of tool they are using. That's pretty much going to help you in bug bounty as well. <clears throat> so this is my observation in private program in bug crowd. There are two kind of private programs in background. The first one you call is an, on, an ongoing private, where usually the range of reward is around 100 up to max 1.5K. It's usually being tested a few times already. It have a long duration because it's ongoing. It's, keep, keep, uh, it's continuously being tested once you get invited. Usually it contains multiple targets, and you don't know how many researchers have been tested that application before or and I also noticed that some of these ongoing private programs were actually a flat program before maybe after the uh, the program feels that they are already mature enough they want but still they have a concern either there's if there there's any other bug that being missed during their flat program they choose to opt for an ongoing program then while in flex program, the pool amount is better compared to ongoing because usually uh, it range around 10K into 20K and usually it's a fresh target. Uh, duration provided to, uh, to test this flex program usually around one up to two weeks and usually it's only contain one or two targets. Uh, and this one or two target will be uh, tested together with other 50 researchers at least 50, 25 researchers, 70 researchers, and it's uh, parallelly being tested. Uh, that's why uh, sometimes you're going to experience some of your account being 
uh, being deleted, being changed the password, something like that. Because yeah, some some don't want to play clean way. Some want to play a dirty way, something like that. Yeah, because the pool is quite big here. <clears throat> so what my observation between this ongoing and flats, I might be wrong, but but this is what actually I noticed a few years back. Uh, in ongoing program, actually usually was covered by low ranking than you, not really active or new researchers. Uh, let's say that currently you're ranking at 20. So usually it was a flag for those that lower than 20. And common volunteers were covered and chance to get P3, P2, P1 still there, even though you one, once you uh, join the program, you can see that, hey, there's already lots of will still be discovered, but there's still chance to get P3 and above. <clears throat> you still get a similar code of point and reward, just bad thing is probably the rewards are fit as defined. Let's say you get P3 is around uh, 300, P2 is 900, something like that. While in flats, a number of experts or similar rank with you will join together and the application, that you, uh, the chance to get P3 issues are slim, but possible if you are faster because you need to compete with others. It contains similar kudos point, kudos point as well, uh, and rewards can be good or pretty similar like ongoing. Why I say that it can be pretty similar because if let's say the application is too vulnerable and they uh, contain lots of vulnerabilities, it will, all the pool reward will be divided depending on numbers of submission being submitted. So sometimes, it can be, your P3 can be around uh, 200, can be around 300 something. So, but, so it's not really much different compared to the ongoing one. <clears throat> this is how uh, you're going to see that, how your email will be uh, whenever you got invited in private flags, you're going to invite it and you can see how many pull rewards, how many researchers has been invited. And the important thing is the date you will be invited earlier before the program will be started. And whenever you, you got this email, you will see this kind, zero when it's rewarded, and they, expect, they already expect response time, which means two weeks afterwards. And you will expect that, hey, you can get more findings, you can get more rewards. But the fact is, <clears throat> what I found that I need to stay awake early in the morning, because the two time zone difference, I need to be fast, the fastest now, not to be the fast anymore. We need to be fastest. Always funny slash as cross site scripting, uh, SSRF, SSC, uh, SSC that probably, and the obvious SSC must discover in the first day when the program launch. It's really competitive. And sometimes uh, due to that, uh, you know that there are lots of people that awake in the morning and also you know that there are more uh, researchers that can find more findings than you. You tend to be make mistakes because you're rushed and due to risk, also you're going to have less focus. And sometimes this uh, flex program have a shared account interface. So you're going to face lots of uh, uh, issues such as account being closed, account being deleted, the password being changed or uh, not accessible as or something like that. So there are a few issues in the flex program in case the program owners are not, re not really ready with that, uh, what we call it, like, like forming issues. <clears throat> Why in private ongoing, usually you, you will see something like this, where it will mention that 40 researchers, but I'm not sure either it's actually a 40 researchers. I'm not sure how many people actually being invited because it's, it's too, it's not really visible here. And uh, while well, we know that there's a breakdown, minimum is 100 and maximum only 5,000. 5, and you see that the date is already invited on, I was invited in 20 of June, but this program already started a few days, a uh, few, uh, week, a week before. So which means this program has already been tested multiple times by a number of researchers. So usually when we were, whenever we join this kind of ongoing pro, uh, private program, we can going to see that, hey, there's all the volunteers being rewarded. So there are the average payouts being uh, 
uh, give to researchers. So we have less motivating <clears throat> because, but what I found that whenever I join an ongoing program, I can have a better focus. It has it ha high potential of duplicates, but it less feel of the rush to find bugs so you can get more uh, time in terms of understanding the application, understanding the logic flow and so on. It's, yeah, it's low, low reward compared to flats, but some of the program have fast responses, whereas you submit the bug today, they will try it tonight, and tomorrow you, you can get the rewards. And if you found a P1, they will definitely bring a reward you on the same day. So I found that on some, based on these two comparisons between flex and ongoing, I found that hey, ongoing program is much better for me. This is why, because this is my approach. Usually I just, nowadays I just spend around three up to four hours max per week because I'm already tired, too old already. <laughs> A program will first respond and wire targets that way I'm going, uh, which program that I usually choose that contain less computers and allows me to give better focus. I usually use 70% of my time to do a recognition and 30% of execution. So because of this my approach, the best program that is suitable for me is ongoing private and also flat private with less competitors. You will know which flat private actually have a less computer once uh, you join the program, you log in, and you see, and you log in as an admin, and you see a list of the users that are available. You can see which emails that actually be invited. It's how I usually take a look on that. <coughs> but then, some people feel doubts with me. They say that, is it really in the old, going, old program? There are high potential of duplicates. The reward is too low. The application was tested multiple times. It probably in Manchester state, yeah, it, it's true. There are high potential of duplicates if you submit uh, common issues that have high potential of duplicates. It's low reward in case you focus on the low reward. And yeah, application tested multiple times, but that doesn't ensure that the application actually uh, <coughs> secure enough. <coughs> so there are some ways if you know and understand Korean. So, this is where the main, uh, main section where my topic will be interesting. I'm going to share you some tricks or tips in uh, hunting bugs in uh, all go and all ongoing old programs, uh, especially and also some public programs as well. The first one we need to understand the bug crowd VRT. So I put two uh, example here one from P3 and second of P4. It's a cross-site scripting, start, enemy 21, you know, server-side injection, contest buffet, contest buffet. <clears throat> cross-site scripting is P3 and P4 for server-side injection. What we can see the common here is that in ongoing, ongoing private program, usually these two types of issues are what people come and submitted and focus. And when we have been invited to this ongoing program and we try to submit the same thing, you see that this issue usually leads to duplicate submissions. But in reality, if you look at the bug card VRT properly, <coughs> this is what other issues in P3. By uh, eliminating the, that cross site scripting, we can see that hey, there's still other chance to get P3 in in the program. <coughs> this is what usually those people left out and we can easily discover it. It's still same P3, same reward and same point. And uh, since oh sorry. <coughs> so see if uh, as I mentioned before, usually ongoing program usually have a wider scope. So what if the program has the wildcard program.com as their target scope, which means you have lots of target, you have more P3, more points, more reward, without giving much effort. Here an example, I take 
from one of my one of the old ongoing program you can see that yeah it just and cluttered password submissions it's an old ongoing program i just found out found that uh a month before wide range of scope as i said yeah cross site screen is mostly due but with low information over http no one ever submitted yet and all of them are p3 i still get the same kudos point i will get the same reward so this is where the important part where you need to understand how bug cover is actually going to help you instead of troubling you uh, usually i am going to check on uh, what other issues that can can be used inside the application such as let's say the application have uh, an ability to upload your your email something like that so you can take a look on the sensitive data exposure as if geolocation is it being striped from the uploaded email something like that yeah this is lot what most other people left out and we can still recover in uh, all programs <clears throat> the second one is uh, i noticed that we can use a multiple attacks on the same parameter let's say let's see this uh, one example usually whenever people see the uh, saw this uh, parameter written url what the obvious thing they're going to submit is and test is open redirect because yeah return url we need to submit open redirect issues usually open redirect is around p3 or p4 and you can see uh my tips here that let's say you found this similar thing instead of you just focus the obvious thing you can try to test and something that non-obvious stuff something like that because this is what those people should forget they forget to try another type of attack from this parameter because from this parameter you can perform a cross site scripting it's a p3 sometimes this written per, uh, written you also can give you external SSRI. it can leave, give you p3 or p4 depending of what kind of attacks or exposure and also sometimes yeah it can give uh produce lfi or other processes it's a rare case but still can happen if the application is misconfigured or poor coding this way i found that hey most of people forget to test there are lots of things <clears throat> lots of uh programs that i see that uh especially for those parameters that contain written your uh, written re written next something like that most of people just uh, submit open reader issue but they didn't uh they forgot to test about cross site scripting they forgot to test the sns as well and that so i take the opportunity to submit it here an example you notice that the date of submission the first one i submitted on six months ago <coughs> is a duplicate it's an open registration bypass do some time to bypass it but two months after that i have noticed that hey why not i test the cross site scripting on the same url uh, same parameter url oh no one submitted yet it's the same parameters same program just different type of submission one different different attacks one dupe and one valid so oh from that point i try to find more parameters inside that uh inside this application which have potential to be used for open redirect and use the same uh payload to find cross site scripting <coughs> interesting this is not not the only first case i uh able to find more uh this is just one of the example uh, i'm not uh not able to share most of them with you guys because it's quite complicated for others because this is the the obvious thing that you can see the return rate is most uh what usually people submitted <coughs> the third one we need to understand the progress nature of business this is more uh when, if you are uh, involved with pen testing jobs or you are security consultant this is what the main main uh, criteria that you need to understand before you start executing the work some of the programs is coming from a hotel acquisition holidays background banking pictures or design games stream playlists songs uh, such as uber is coming from transportation some some programs just depending on the review and comments as their profit uh, also uh, it's depend some of them depending on the food or items uh, and there, there are more, uh, such as background. They're depending on 
hacking uh, they depending on their uh, for depending on another program for, as their clients and that so that's where their target is so some of the business looks something that is not really sensitive such example that i said before a picture a design such as flicker okay so it's just a picture is it really is it really important so most of people that I, um, <clears throat> most of the submission that i notice in all programs that most of the people that something is going to feel something like ah, something not really sensitive. It's meh. So whenever whenever you guys uh, when whenever the we have the kind this kind of thinking, we're going to have the similar minds of risk. We're going to see uh, credit card exposure, credit credential exposure, email exposure, token extra extra. We keep on getting the similar minds of risk to only find this kind of special in the same in this application but in fact you are doing wrong because if you notice the business main profit is coming from the picture or design from the users from the customer different programs have different nature of business that's where their main product is that is where the profitable stuff coming from <coughs> their assets etc here an example <coughs> This is just an example that this moo.com is not the does not have any bounty at all. I'm not sure, but it's just an example because this this is one of uh, an ongo old ongoing program in Bakrout that uh, have a similar asset or similar miniature business where this program allows you to upload your own design or image before it being printed in their product such as a business card, uh, their marks t-shirts so on this then will used to be printed for the product that you want to buy so you are a customer you can upload your image there are lots of public images available as well in their website there's all lots of example lots of templates so from here we can see that oh there's lots of image so on so that's an upload function I'm usually going to test uh upload bypass is there any sse there <coughs> is there any uh possibility to upload backdoors so on but from this i was invited into this program probably two months after that after it was uh, uh being tested a few times and i noticed it was uh the there are around 30 something issues already been submitted and being rewarded so uh, at first i thought oh they probably have no more issues inside the application hey but then, hey um we're running out of time Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. So how, how many times or last minute? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Can I, do I need to uh, finish it? Yeah, yeah, we got Okay, uh, point. okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So uh, the thing is, you can upload your image. That means your image should be private. So no one ever tested to find any idol. So here I found all idols inside this application and all idols belongs to me. <clears throat> and the fourth one, revisit your restore or duplicate submission. Usually this is where you're going to uh, see most of the time. You submit the process screen from the same parameter, but it's different endpoint, but your submission still be being a duplicate. And analysis, you're going to put this as a duplicate, but if you're lucky, you will be invited again in the same program. Just submit it again. Here, an example, on 2016, I submit uh, on the rejects. Uh, path where it's uh, being marked as duplicate but then i've been invited again uh, in the program as an ongoing private i submitted a hey, still being accepted and still not being uh, resolved at all so i get more money and get more rewards from, from there and revisit the unresolved submission similarly similarly let's say you already submitted a uh, submission that is a valid rewarded and then the program is closed and you might be invited the same program Try to revisit your submission just now. Uh, usually, in case the status is unresolved, try submitting and sometimes it's still working. Here, an example, it's been resolved in a year ago, but then I tested again when I got invited, it's still unresolved because probably there are some minor changes in the course which trigger it back, the uh, vulnerabilities back. And the fifth one is change your user agents change to your mobile because this is going to 
give you uh, some access to risk access will be you allow you to access some mobile site different sets of cookies content additional parameters and also lack of strict controls here where i by changing a mobile uh, the usage into mobile to Android, I can able to bypass administration, screenization. There's a lot of things in this mobile site. So revisit your old site, old site uh, invited program because they usually have new target with top notifications. Uh, their codes might be changed, and also their code change might trigger all is resolve issues, uh, such as some uh, like I just mentioned showed just now. <clears throat> so the conclusion is: do not give up. If I have not invited into a fresh private program, focus on the programs properly, understand their objective and business. Do not easily sway from your current targets just because you think there's no more bugs. Retest and revisit your old program a few times in a month. Fully focus on recognizance, rec recon. So finally say I just uh, went back from three weeks holidays, back to say an ongoing program. Hey, still can submit a few issues. Some of that is P1 as after all. It's still easy. So do not give up. I'm not sure that there's still more minutes to accept any questions. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> unfortunately we're out of time. Yeah, um, sorry. No worries, no worries. Yeah. Um, you can find Yupar on uh, Twitter. What's your Twitter account? Uh, yeah, Yupar. Okay, cool. So uh, tweet at <coughs> him.